Hi there Aries, this is a really really powerful month I feel for a lot of signs where there are necessary changes that are happening for you guys. I feel like there needs to be a little bit of a paradigm shift. Um, there's a lot of career success, there are a lot of like practical, physical, tangible success. Um, success is coming for you guys. So I feel like whenever uh, things are really going right. I feel it is really important for us to be thankful. Okay, so I'm gonna relay four messages for you guys and then we're gonna um, Go into each one of these messages and see how they play out. So we're gonna unpack these ideas So of course the first message here is gratitude and gratitude is mainly for everything that you have accumulated Okay, and I feel like for many of you um, things are going really well for yourself and you're kind of like feeling very elated, feeling like you're on great heights, looking down and thinking about, you know, where you've been and all the things that you had to do, all the, the trenches that you had to crawl through and, you know, all the hardships that you had to bear in order to get you where you are right now. And I feel that you're really proud of yourself, but I also want to say as well, a lot of the times, yes, sh through sheer strength and determination, we're able to overcome a lot of these obstacles. But at the same time, we need to say a prayer of gratitude for the power that be that assisted us or helped us during the times when we feel like we couldn't go on, okay? So it's less about the ego and more about having faith and, and assigning gratitude to, to things, to people, to circumstances that have really helped pave the way for you, okay? And um, that's something I wanna talk a little bit in depth about. The second message here, and they're saying here, a completion of a debt, a completion of a cycle, and uh, whenever we complete things, we can exhale this sigh of relief and we feel like, okay, done, what's next? So I feel like you're at a really, really good space right now where a major, major period of culmination and completion has just happened for you guys. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Number three, they're saying here, don't rush the process. So, you know, we are in the period of Mercury in retrograde and it is in the t uh, sign of Aries, in your sign. And you're going to feel um, restricted. You're going to feel restrained. And, you know, fire signs do not handle restrictions very well. They do not like to be told what to do. And they don't like it when they're physically held back uh, energetically or just, you know, by another person. So the way for you to work through this energy is, you know, um, allow things to kind of fall into place. Um, be less reactive and just be a little bit more laid back, okay? Um, don't fight it. It's going to feel like you're wearing a straight jacket and you're trying to get out of it, okay? And um, resistance is futile. So just let the process play out at least until the end of the Mercury retrograde cycle, which is going to be um, towards the end of the month, okay? So you want to just let things be a little bit. So just ease up on that energy. Don't um, exert too much of your energy trying to get things moving. They're stalled for a reason. Last message, prime real estate. So I feel like um, this has to do with something that you own and things that you have in your possession, okay? So let's talk about the first message here. Let's talk about gratitude. Okay, so what I am seeing here is um, for many, many, many of you, I understand that, you know, the, the, when it comes to work, when it comes to achieving whatever it is that you desire, you know, like um, getting a job so that you can have a house and getting a house so that you can uh, invite all the people that you love into the house. Um, having disposable income so that you can buy nice things for your kids, so that you can buy a, a car and a home for your parents. You have this tremendous sense of loyalty and I feel like not a lot of people get that about you. They see you as someone who's like constantly on the go, who's darting back and forth, who is very, very ambitious, but they also see you as uh, materialistic. But your sense of materialism isn't just contained to you. You want to take care of the people that you love. 
Everyone wants nice things, but I feel like for you guys, you do want nice things, but you want to be able to afford a higher standard of living, mainly because you want to be okay. You want to be able to take care of the people that you love. And at the same time, I feel like, especially if for, for those of you who came from, you know, rags to riches, all your worldly success is kind of like the physical, the tangible manifestation of all the things that you've had to do all your achievements, it's coming out in a very tangible way. So if you have designer clothes, you want to flaunt it because you have worked your butt off for it and you feel like, you know, I'm going to flaunt it, damn it. I don't care what people say. So that's fine. And I also feel as well, it is really important when we go through life to preserve and maintain the sense of humility. Okay, and so gratitude and humility kind of um, they're interwoven and they are they, they do come hand in hand. And the point of it is, yes, you have, I want to say, overcome against all odds to get where you are today. You had to be very determined. You had to work hard. You had to wake up every day just to, you know, go to a job that you hate. And then through over time, working at that job, gaining more job experience, gaining more, you know, um, experience in your line of work, you're able to get into a higher paying job, et cetera, et cetera. So that's just the natural progression. And I feel like some of you are kind of lost in the process and you start to think that like, I got here based on my pure hard work and my sheer determination. No one helped me to get where I am. No one guided me. I didn't have a mentor grown up. Um, some of you even, you know, my parents never went to college. They never guided me through that process. So there is this sense of um, resentment. Resentment that the environment was not supportive. Resentment that you didn't have the guidance and the mentorship. And, you know, the things were not handed to you on a silver platter. And the thing that I want to remind you is that um, whatever you believe in, whatever power that be, you know, that you believe in, um, I feel like life for the universe will never give us what we can't handle. And so if you're comparing yourself to, you know, somebody else who is very privileged, who had educated parents, who had mentorship, who had money, who had like uh, everything handed to them on a silver platter, and they're in the same position as you. And then if you're comparing that to you, who had it rough, who had to make your own way, who had to work extra hard, who had to even learn a new language, who had to, you know, combat uh, family instability, uh, financial instability to get where you are right now. And you're comparing your life to this other person. You both are in the same place, but the other person had everything handed to them. And you had to fight for everything that was given to you. And you kind of look at the other person with resentment, right? You're just like, they're so clueless and blah, blah, blah. And so let's just take a moment to also appreciate the fact that you got where you were or you got where you, you are today, mainly because you needed to learn those lessons uh, earlier. You needed to learn how to fight. You needed to learn how to, you know, be determined. You needed to learn how to fend for yourself. And the other person, they're living a different life. They needed to learn different skill sets. So comparing the two, it's like apples to oranges. It's not applicable. So we all are here to kind of go through our individual life lessons and our individual experiences. And so we really can't compare our achievements with another person, nor should we compare our achievements with another person. Doing so can trigger a lot of resentment, a lot of like um, feelings of injustices. And it is also very, very, very divisive when we're trying to cultivate, you know, a harmonious working environment, when we're trying to cultivate a sense of compassion and understanding for ourselves and other people, when we're trying to cultivate a sense of community. So on the flip side of that, let's also talk about, you know, um, we are a product of our environment. And I also feel as well, 
we can't get where we need to go unless we have to go through these lessons, but also uh, we have learned from other people along the way. So in that case, in that situation, it's the people that shape you who you are, for good or for bad, but they also have helped you along the way. So I feel like it would be really, really self-centered to say that I got where I, I got today through my sheer determination and hard work. Nobody helped me and you know, that, that's all it is. And that's not true. So think back and, you know, um, give that, that, that gratitude, give that thanks to the people that helped you. I'm sure they are out there. You know, give thanks to maybe even your mom and dad who was babysitting the kids so that you can, you know, finish up your schoolwork so that you can, you know, work an extra uh, or a few hours later like work overtime and the people that are willing to, you know, support you, read your term papers, make correction, proofread, teachers that inspire you. There are plenty of people that were there to really egg you on. Okay. And I also feel for some of you, give that gratitude to yourself for, I feel many of you have made, um, you know, let's just say, in your 20s and 30s, um, decisions that you should have known better. And this is not to, to, you know, shame anybody, but I feel like you learn lessons the hard way and you knew that, oh, I shouldn't make that, you know, choice. It's not good for me. But you did it anyways. You had to learn the hard way and you had to learn it a specific way. And so other people might have coasted through, you know, the 20s and the 30s. Uh, they didn't really uh, get themselves bogged down with these problems, but you did. So it took you longer to get where you need to be in relation to the other person. So everything that happens, happens for a reason. And everything, we, we need to really understand, you know, like, we're all parts of a whole. And through sheer strength and determination, you got where you got today but it's still a byproduct of everything that the everybody that helped you along the way circumstances that needed to fall into place in the uh, specific order in order for things to propel for you okay so think of it as like the invisible hand the 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 divine you know guidance whatever it is give that prayer of gratitude take a moment to really think about all the people that really contributed to who you are right now and you need to give that thanks okay um, doing so is going to help you kind of re-embed yourself in this social fabric. It's going to help you feel a little bit less tension and a little bit more at ease with the people around you. Okay. And it's going to also, uh, strengthen that emotional bond between you and other people. Okay. Um, second message here, completing a debt. So a cycle of completion. I'm feeling for many of you, um, there, you might have like, you know, paid off your mortgage. I feel like this is something big. You might have paid off a major, major mortgage. So you're no longer owing money on a home, um, major car payments. You're, you're paying that off car payment, student loans for some of you, as well as uh, home repair loans. So for those of you who are, you know, who had to take out a loan because of home repairs, and you're also kind of resentful, like, oh, mom and dad didn't have the money to help me, and I had to do it on my own, and now it's paid off. I'm so proud of myself, and you should be proud of yourself. And um, I'm feeling as well, uh, credit card. For those of you who were struggling in your 20s and your 30s uh, with financial obligations and, you know, running up your credit or ruining your credit, um, you're paying that off. You're getting things repaired. You're getting your life back on track on the financial front. Um, I'm also feeling as well, freeing up uh, revenue. So I feel like many of you, um, it's, I, I'm seeing as well, some fathers um, paying off like child support. You're at the end of a cycle where the child is, you know, has just turned 18 and your financial contributions or obligations, I would say, are 
you're no longer needed so not just financially not that you know they don't need you emotionally they do but financially you're freed okay and then for others um, even like you know couples or, or women uh, the kids have flown the nest and now you're free so there is a freeing up of a revenue stream since you're no longer needing to pay all these loans or to take care of the child or to pay child support or whatever it is um, the money is freed up um, definitely you know don't, don't look at it as oh yay I have this uh, new revenue stream I'm gonna go buy things I'm just gonna buy a new car I'm just gonna you know don't do that so spending freeze is is in store okay and um, you want to start investing you need to put that money away somehow to invest it's freeing up because there is a reason for it so don't go wild don't spend all your money all at once okay free up that revenue stream invest in something and I feel like if you uh, do your research there is going to be a major financial win for you when it comes to investment opportunities okay so if you are people that are in that category where something is freeing up definitely invest in something um, I feel like you're gonna be pleasantly surprised especially come the September time frame okay um, I do see major financial gains here so it's really really important um, they are also saying as well with the prime real estate message some of you are sitting on prime real estate like you finish paying off a home the home is accumulating in value very 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 quickly so you own a piece of prime real estate if you have that extra revenue stream you definitely should invest in real estate you definitely should look into you know investment opportunities buying houses and even putting that house up for rent and then moving to a different location and buying a property or even renting a property because your house the prime real estate it's so high that um, whatever residual income revenue you get from renting it is going to pay for the other house so I feel like you are in a really good position here to kind of um, what is that word like uh, rearrange your living arrangement so that you can benefit from this prime real estate idea concept okay um, I'm also sensing as well they they keep pointing downwards like land 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 like land investment thinking about even um, investing overseas buying property overseas for those who are who have the money who travels a lot or who are you know in retirement age and you're thinking about settling elsewhere I do see a lot of people um, thinking about the Southeast Asian area I'm also seeing like um, let me see Southeast Asia I'm also seeing as well like um, the north northwestern corner of the United States as well as Canada so like real estate in those areas um, if you do want to look into that I, I feel like it's a good time for you to kind of um, make the, these investments okay so let's let me backtrack a little bit here um, with that message here completing that debt um, save up the money save up whatever you can okay and uh, definitely you know like gratitude and humility humility is um, teaching you you know to live a more humble life so that means curbing your spending a little bit um, you know uh, entertaining people at home and not living your life through social media okay so that basically means you know don't have that flashy lifestyle um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it but I feel that if you sense if you have any any type of inkling that this is empty this is no longer fun this is no longer what I want to do then curb down on that social media presence and reinvest the money rather than you know wasting or spending exorbitant amount of money to maintain that lifestyle to maintain the the uh, the the designer clothes and you know the the fast cars okay so I feel that ultimately you're it's gonna leave you very empty and it's gonna leave you financially drained so what's the point right um, 
reinvest that money elsewhere. You're in a really good position right now to think about, you know, how you can live with a lot more gratitude and a lot more humility. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump now. Prime real estate, going back to that message again. Um, I feel as if many of you are thinking about as well, like retirement for parents. So you might have finished taking care of the kids and now you're thinking about, you know, how are my folks doing? Are they happy? Do I need to buy them property? Do I need to do anything for them? And um, you're going to want to do something big for them. But I would urge you before you do that, uh, have a talk with them because they might not want you to. They might have, you know, different ideas in mind. They might not want to settle down in one place. Like if you're thinking about buying them a car or a house, they're just like, no, honey, we want to travel the world. We want to be somewhere else. So you want to have these conversations first before you jump the gun. I feel like some of you are planning a big surprise, but you need to have the conversation first, okay? Um, for those of you who are dealing with children, who have children, and especially an earth sign child, so a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn, what I do feel here is um, this is a child that needs to be, uh, the energy needs to be expended. So they need to either have, be enrolled in, you know, like extracurricular activities, a tutor, a mentor, or something outside of the class classroom, okay? So they it's it's almost like they're not getting enough stimulation and they're not getting enough um th their curiosity is not satiated in the classroom they're going to need more and I, I especially feel like extracurricular activities and i do feel as well if you have children who are like in high school and they're thinking about um, studying abroad, like go, going to study abroad, definitely encourage them because I feel like that's going to be a really good opportunity for them to really expand their mind and their consciousness and also to have that, uh, to make them a lot more competitive when they join the university or when they are in the labor force. I feel like there's a child here that um, wants to go somewhere else. So it, it could be like, you know, they're in the West Coast and they're in high school and there's a, a, a debate or there's like a summer program in the in, in Washington, D.C., in New York. They want to get involved. Definitely uh, encourage them to go, okay? Encourage them to do it. Encourage them to just explore outside of their territory. And I also feel like they could be middle school age going up, uh, over, like going up further away for a competition so there is a little bit of money that needs to be accounted for when if you have in particular an earth sign child so Taurus Virgo or Capricorn so the last message that I have here for you guys is um, they're mentioning don't rush the process okay and this is in regards to your work and your relationship so let me talk about the relationship first um, many of you once again I'm getting that clock it's that ticking clock and you could be male or female. It doesn't really matter. But I feel like a lot of you, you're very uh, results oriented. You rush through the process so that you can have the result that you want. OK, and uh, you're very fast and speedy and, you know, you want what you want and you just uh, kind of beeline for it. And what I'm seeing here is wanting to a relationship to form wanting certainty, wanting that definitive answer from a relationship partner. And they're saying, don't rush the process. You need to know this person a little bit more. You need to take time to kind of understand this person and see how they operate under pressure before you should commit to them. And a lot of the times, you know, when things are great, the relationship is great, right? And then something happens, something traumatic happens, and then you find out that your partner is not who you thought they were because you have never seen them under pressure. You have never seen them kind of slink away and be be the person that you didn't think, you know, that be the person that couldn't handle the pressure or buckled under the pressure or uh, exhibited very unadmirable traits under pressure. So there is something here about your relationship. Um, the partner is going to experience a lot of pressure for this month. And it is up to you to kind of calmly from the sidelines, observe how they handle difficulties, observe if they're losing their cool 
and observe whether or not, you know, they are still right for you, whether or not um, the pressure has gotten to them or they're able to overcome it. So I feel like it's a, a, an observation that needs to happen here. And so slow down a little bit and don't rush this process, okay? Um, I'm feeling as well. Let me see here. I'm feeling as well, some of you are just kind of jaded with the whole concept of marriage. So kind of like, oh, it's overrated or, um, and I feel some of you, um, it, it's, it's sort of like, you might have had, you know, uh, parents that divorce, okay? Or you might have uh, worked in a capacity where you, you see a lot of people kind of cheating on their spouse or people stepping out of their relationships or flirting outside of the relationship. And it kind of made you feel really jaded about relationships and marriages and, you know, happily ever after. Like, yes, those are nice concepts, but you feel like they don't really exist. So some of you are feeling a little bit jaded and you're kind of out there having a good time, having fun. But I know deep down, you still believe in that happily ever after. And I mentioned this before, you know, you're a lot softer and you're a lot more of a romantic than you would let on. You don't want people to see you as this, you know, warm, fuzzy, romantic, uh, sensitive type. But deep down, you do believe in these things. And if you believe in these things, there's no shame in it. You know, uh, don't talk tough if you don't believe the talk. So it's really, really important for you to just, you know, remind yourself that there are good people out there. It's just the people that you might have dealt with in the past were not the right people. It doesn't mean they're bad people. They just weren't right for you. And so coming to terms with the fact that there are good people out there, there are, you know, um, it, it, that it, it still takes a lot to make a relationship work and, you know, that person might not have been a bad person. They just weren't the right one for you. So release the resentment as well. You know, they're not a bad person. They're just not right for me. I try to force them into something that they weren't. And I saw them as something that they are not. So, you know, try to release that. Okay. And then release the blame that you place on yourself too. How could I have fallen for that all these years? Release that energy. Let it go. Um, so the relationship here, just don't rush the process. Uh, ease up a little bit. Let things organically and naturally kind of play itself out, okay? Um, you're going to be a lot more um, in the process of easing up. I feel like you're going to feel a little bit of like that weight lifted off your shoulders. You're going to feel like I was going through life charging ahead all the time. You're tired and you want somebody to help you pick up the slack. You want somebody to kind of like be in it with you, be that, you know, uh, relationship partner with you where things can be fair, where you don't have to fight so hard, where you don't have to be the one to plan everything and get things going like you're tired of it. And so ease up a little bit. Um, the energy that you kind of give yourself the energy that you kind of embody is going to be the energy that you attract. Okay, so ease up a little bit. Let things, you know, organically play themselves out. Don't control and don't rush. Okay, uh, Mercury in retrograde, it's not a good time to rush anyways. And um, this Mercury in retrograde, I feel like it's really important for you to kind of get to the fundamental truth, which is, which is that, uh, as much as you believe that, you know, I did this, I achieved this of my own volition, of my own, um, my own sheer, you know, determination, I don't think that's the truth. And I feel like it's really important for us to be, to look at all the people, all the situations, all the circumstances that, that helped us get to where we are, okay, and, and give gratitude to that. Um, I'm feeling in the work environment right now, there's a, a situation here where you're feeling a little bit like uh, work is going great financially. You're in a really good prime position to, you know, earn a lot of money to continue in your work. But I feel like you're looking for something else. 
And I'm also sensing as well, like you're telling yourself, I'm not happy here. But it's not because you're not happy there. It's because you you feel like you're not really growing anymore. So it's really important to call it for what it is by its name rather than say, I'm not happy here. You can ask yourself, you know, I'm not being challenged here. I think that's the, the better sentence. You're, I'm not cha being challenged here. I'm not learning anything new. So what can I do so that I can be challenged? What can I do so that I can learn something new? There's some transition happening in your career. And I feel that it's going to be very good for you. And I especially feel as well, it's going to be delayed. So you might not want to hear that. But I keep seeing the month of September being a really good opportunity for things to shift in your career sector. Okay, new jobs, new clients, new revenue stream, uh, new ideas. But I do see a big, 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 big shift. And it's going to be happening towards the end of the year. Okay, September for many of you, September. So I hope the reading has been helpful, Aries. I do wish you all the best. Take care of yourself, okay? And um, maybe I'll be back next, next um, the end of the month, maybe, for the mid-month reading. If not, I'll see you guys in May. Take care. Bye-bye.